When Truffaut got in serious trouble in his late teens, he was taken under the wing of another lover of literature and cinema, a charitable man who became another, better father, André Bazin. At a crucial moment in his life, Truffaut was all but adopted by Bazin and his wife Janine. Bazin died of leukemia at the age of 40 on November 11, 1958, the day that Truffaut began shooting his first extremely autobiographical feature, The 400 Blows. Thirteen years later, Truffaut would complete the work that had taken up so much of Bazin's life, his projected book on Jean Renoir. For Bazin and for Truffaut, who named his production company after one of his films, Renoir was a pillar. The great French filmmaker, nearly infallible. And for Truffaut, there was another pillar. When he arrived in New York to do press for Jules and Jim, he mentioned Alfred Hitchcock's name during the course of several encounters with film journalists and critics like Bosley Crowther, Herman G. Weinberg, and Daniel Abadie. And he was shocked to realize that Hitchcock was not taken seriously as an artist in America. Truffaut didn't just lament the situation. He decided to do something about it. He wrote to Hitchcock and proposed a book comprised of a series of interviews that would cover his entire career, film by film. And Truffaut ended his letter with these words. If overnight the cinema had to do without its soundtrack and become once again a silent art, then many directors would be forced into unemployment. But among the survivors, there would be Alfred Hitchcock. And everyone would realize at last that he is the greatest film director in the world. Dear Monsieur Truffaut, replied Hitchcock, your letter brought tears to my eyes, and how grateful I am to receive such a tribute from you. Truffaut was a working director at the peak of his creative life, undertaking a literary project and carrying it out with the same level of research, commitment, and dedication that he brought to his films. He did something unprecedented. He corrected decades of desensitization and altered the course of film history, away from the thoughtlessly conceived notion that Hitchcock was a lightweight entertainer and toward the realization that this was a master who had created a vast, abundant world with his collected films, a world in which you could dwell for a lifetime. 